I know I was just at a um, franchise conference and I, there was a uh, painting franchise and they were like, you know what? A lot of our, we're starting to see our franchise owners add on, you know, residential cleaning, add on, you know, Christmas lights or gutter cleaning, all those type of things. So it's kind of like, I think we're starting to see multiple revenue streams, even for a business owner. That's kind of how to diversify once you have the customer. Hello, and welcome to the Hire Yourself podcast. We publish episodes twice a week about franchising and business. Each Monday, we'll release a 30-minute episode where we dive deep into a topic. Thursdays are our shorter, lighter episodes where we will discuss things like business resources or topics of personal growth. I am one of your hosts, Pete Gilfillan, and I'm joined with my business partner, Nat Truitt. And together, we have every experience in business and franchise ownership. We have worked hard over the years to realize our dreams and control our own destinies. Our experience will help you become a better business owner and franchisee so that you can live life on your own terms. Well, Nat, I had a really exciting day yesterday. I did a webinar on kind of the gig economy from the standpoint of franchising, how people are corporate executives and they start a franchise inside, kind of a side gig. Uh, I know you and I have talked about that before. It's, it's kind of pretty cool what people are doing with franchising uh, and using it as a side gig. Totally. <laughs> Totally. Uh, you know, but I was I was also thinking about as I was prepping for that webinar that the gig deal has always been around. Like I know you and I as as kids when we were going to school, we also did side gigs to make a little bit of money, right? Did I think you did some stuff with your dad's business, picking up bricks or something like that? Yeah, I mean I was always working um, you know, Saturdays and you know, holidays and summers and, and all that kind of thing. And then also, like when I was, oh, actually, I never told you this story, Pete. When um, I was like 10, 11 years old, my uh, dad, he was being an entrepreneur, he uh, knew about these guys that needed their lawns mowed. So my grandpa had retired a little bit early, had this uh, orange Chevrolet Nova. I think you probably remember that car. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we put the lawnmower in the back of his car and we like drive around pull the lawnmower out. Good old Nat would go and mow the, mow the yard, you know, get his five bucks and go to the next house. So yeah, I've been gigging for a long time. Yeah. Then my dad made me do the same thing, right? He's like, uh, I created a little flyer and I did uh, mowed lawns and sealed driveways and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think we grew up with this gig economy, but you know, as we now start moving forward, as we get older, the gig economy is really kind of coming into its own. I was reading something like now, 35% of people have some type of gig income. That's crazy. Yeah. I think maybe some of the macro trends driving this probably is actually technology. Because like you and I were just talking about, we would actually manually go do work. I think a lot of people are actually able in the gig economy today, able to kind of be at their home office, using their computer, uh, making, you know, doing marketing things or video or, or uh, even doing podcast. Yeah. I mean, it's opened up the world, the technology from a standpoint, and it's just going to continue to grow as we get better with technology or te technology continues to advance. I mean, you think about it, like in the, they say in like 10 years, the gig economy will be 50% of the income will come from a, a gig thing. So that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. And it's going to impact our kids. I mean, are your kids, uh, you know, like you and I started doing gig things when we were, were young. How about are your kids doing anything uh, on the side? Yeah, mine are definitely not mowing grass, but <laughs> it's so more along the line. Yeah, it's more along the lines of uh, one of them is working on like you know it's interesting because they're actually kind of creative and they're using technology. So uh, one is uh, coming up with like a knife brand. He wants to sell knives on the internet. And then uh, yesterday I was just talking to one of my boys, and they said they were going to come up with a peanut butter and jelly business because they were going to. He was uh, doing a celebration peanut butter and jelly because he just won a huge wrestling match. And so he, you know, it was like a Dagwood Bumstead uh, peanut butter and jelly. So then he's like, this could be a business idea. And then he's working on a logo and everything. So it's kind of cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. I heard there's a pretty good spread in the uh, peanut butter sandwich <laughs> business. Nice. nice. <laughs> so, all right. So, so our kids are doing it, but it is a big part of our economy. So let's, let's kind of just talk quickly about gig. As we talk about gig, the way we're going to define it today is you have something you do full time, and then you have something on the side where you're making a little extra money, right? Where you're in control. Because I think the key word with gig 
uh, at least the way I look at it is you're in control, right? If you want to do it, great. If you don't want to do it, you're not required by a boss. You're not required in terms of hours. It's, it's on your terms, but it's a way in which to bring some money in that's not kind of the traditional way. Is that the way you define it? Yeah, I think people are looking to put together a couple different things. Um, so they might do, you know, I was in Florida a little while ago and there was a lot of retirees and they were, you know, they had their retirement income, but they also had their Uber income. So you just see people using all sorts of opportunities and putting together the pieces. And what's beautiful is they can work when they want to and they can stay home when they want to. So I think it's just trying people seeking for that ultimate control and flexibility. And they might be, you know, working 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week or even up, you know, 100 hours a week if they need to make more. But it's on their terms, right? And I think exactly. that's the, the important thing is now people are kind of figuring out, hey, I can be in control opposed to like when I started with Ford, I mean, you had a boss and you did exactly and you you basically didn't have any control. And I think as we look at gig economy being a bigger part of the way in which people create incomes, they ha- it's for control. It's about having that flexibility. And, and one of the things I like about doing what I do is I have the flexibility where I could get to work hard, but I can also do stuff um, that I want uh, anytime yeah. I want to do it. So you know, I always kind of tease that entrepreneurs only work half days. And then, of course, the punchline is 12 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. But at least we get to choose the 12 hours. That's the beautiful thing, right? Yeah. I mean, and some of us get up really early and, and uh, other of us sleep in a little bit. So, exactly. but, the, but the idea is that. So let's talk about the gig economy as it pertains to franchising. And so we'll kind of take it in two pieces. So one would be as a business owner, right? So a gig economy, a gig franchise opportunity might be where I'm a corporate executive. Like I was presenting yesterday, I call it the executive model semi-absentee. So you keep your corporate job and you start a franchise on the side. So I might be the marketing manager for a company and then I start a yoga studio on the side, right? And I'm spending 15 or 20 hours a week. So, you know, you work with a lot of executives like me. Are you seeing a growing trend of more people instead of going into a franchise full-time, they're going into a franchise more in that side gig deal to build to build something on the side. Yeah, I think people always have a little bit of fear and anxiety about you know just jumping in with both feet and leaving that paycheck and, and health benefits and all that. I think too, like when I'm thinking about franchising, whether you're like a executive or whether you're another business owner, I almost would see like a gig economy potent or a gig franchising being a, um, you know, also could be a guy that owns one business and then decides to invest in a second business and a third business. And so then they have, you know, two or three businesses, maybe somewhat complementary, but they're all kind of synergistic, splitting your time between the different businesses, you know, working where you want, when you want, using technology to, you know, your iPhone when you're on vacation to to check your uh, spreadsheets or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you had the in-home care franchise, right? When you were younger. Now that would be considered something full-time, right? That, that couldn't be considered a side gig. (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, definitely a full-time. That's a, that's a, a, that's not just a side hustle. It's not a gig. It's yeah. It's It's just full-time, right? Full-time. But you know, the, um, like with all these businesses, I think the nice thing when you have something of your own is that you're actually building an asset. I heard recently somebody was talking about a job, like almost like you're rent renting your income. Yeah. But when you have a business, whatever that business might be, you know, where you're developing relationships and recurring revenue, you're more developing an asset or you're actually, it's like buying a house, like you own your job, right. uh, which well, I thought was a really kind of cool concept. Or you control your acumen, right? If I'm really yeah. good at marketing or developing podcasts, right? I can go and take that and make my own business with it. Right. From that standpoint. Yeah. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So, so we know with franchising that there's a lot of people that are keeping their corporate job or have other businesses and investing in a franchise, kind of that executive model semi absentee and they're scaling, right? They may have multiple different locations. So, so from a standpoint of a business, we know that, you know, that's really good. So let's talk a little bit about team members for these franchises and we'll use yoga, 
right? So I have a corporate job. I start a yoga studio franchise on the side and I have yoga instructors. Now, most likely these yoga instructors, they're probably not doing yoga full time, instructing yoga, probably hard to make an income that way. So maybe they're teaching or they got uh, a job as a marketing professional and they're teaching yoga classes on Saturdays and Thursday nights and stuff like that. I, you know, is that, is that kind of where you see it? Oh yeah. I was actually just talking to a woman the other day and she was a nurse and works full time at the hospital, but then she's like, Oh yeah. And then I also teach yoga on, you know, the sites, like on, you know, the weekends and things like that. So I think it just gets, lets people get out of the house, do something interesting, you know, make a little bit of shopping money or, you know, a Amazon money, if you will. And, um, you know, kind of keeps, keeps things a little bit interesting. Right. But if I had a senior care franchise and I had somebody that was working for me full time, meaning that I was giving them 40 hours uh, caring, watching over people, then that really wouldn't be a kind of a side gig. No, you know, from a business owner's perspective, I actually always kind of like to have long term relationships and have people, you know, work uh, full time for us. It just makes everything a lot more predictable. I think when you're like with senior care as an example, like a lot, there's been a lot of conversations about kind of what the Uberization of senior care and a lot of tech startups in California have kind of died trying to climb that mountain um, because, you know, in their mind, they're like, we're going to just make an app and, you know, it's going to be like, I need a caregiver and then a caregiver is going to show up kind of like Uber. But, you know, with like senior care, it's very much a relationship business. People are a little bit concerned about strangers coming into their mom's house. So I think that there's always going to be a place for kind of the more traditional full-time W-2 and supervised. Actually, that's a good point. I probably with the gig economy, there actually probably is a lot less supervision of the workforce, right? That's probably, that's something I hadn't really thought about that much before. But like with senior care, that's the whole thing. You want those caregivers supervised with Uber driver. It's kind of the technology of supervising them because you have the GPS and the review system and all that. Yeah, supervising and control are two different things, right? Exactly. And I think that's why mm -hmm. the gig economy, so many people, they don't want to be controlled. Like the, we've talked about this before. The average person now is on a job for four years. They, everybody's kind of their own free agent. And so when I start working full time, then I'm, I'm basically being controlled by you. So that's interesting. I, I find it compelling. I like the idea of having multiple different revenue streams. That makes a lot of sense. And so the gig economy, people are pulling multiple things to do to, to basically create an income for themselves. And I, I see that, as we talked about earlier, the continuation of it or growing because of technology. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I can start a business out of my garage now uh, or a, a small hobbit hole in my house. I mean, it's, right. it's pretty cool uh, yeah. from a standpoint. I know I was just at a um, franchise conference and I, there was a uh, painting franchise and they were like, you know what? A lot of our, we're starting to see our franchise owners add on, you know, residential cleaning, add on, you know, Christmas lights, leaf or gutter cleaning, all those type of things. So it's kind of like, uh, I think we're starting to see multiple revenue streams, even for a business owner, because that's kind of how to diversify once you have the customer. So it's almost like gig revenue for lack exactly. of better terms, right? <laughs> so they're creating multiple different uh, mini gigs uh, to create revenue within their yeah. business. Uh, I didn't think about that. It's very, very cool. Yeah. So where do you see um, from a standpoint of the impact of the gig economy on franchising, right? So, you know, is it, is it get harder to find people to, to work with you, you know, to do whatever the service because you're, again, you're not in control or is it, is it something that makes it better for a franchise owner? I don't know. I, I feel like um, it's really important that as business owners, we keep an open mind and try to, you know, be relevant. It's, you know, technology changes so rapidly every nine or 12 or 18 months, you know, things are changing, technology is changing, the uh, workforce is changing. So I think we have to Think of these as like um, uh, the tide in the in the sea or in the ocean, and I don't think we can fight it. Like if it's if the tide's going this way, I think we kind of have to adapt to survive as business owners, and figure out you know how how to match up good opportunities. And I do think the other thing I think is really important to people 
in this gig economy is kind of like the culture or, you know, you hear a lot, you know, the millennials, a lot of times you hear about wanting to be cause-based or, you know, like kind of that, you know, Tom's shoes where you buy a pair of shoes and they donate a pair of shoes or, or what have you. So I think taking time to really think through your brand and think about how it's making a difference or, you know, I think that that's going to become more and more important to be able to attract the workforce that wants to be a part of that. So that's one thing I've been kind of observing over the last few few years. Yeah, it's about having purpose for mm-hmm. sure from a standpoint. And I, and I think as a society, as a country, we're going to have to, and I think many countries are dealing with this, but the laws, I mean, there are states that are out there now trying to put together laws that protect people and and they may protect people, uh, but they may also hurt people, right? Where I enjoy having this gig income. I like doing all these different things. I don't want to be controlled. And all of a sudden now the government's saying or the state's saying, hey, listen, you, you have to you know, do this or the businesses have to do this. So it'll be interesting to see where all that goes. Yeah, I mean, I think back to like you, when you think about the Industrial Revolution, right, where they had kids that were 12, 13, 14 years old working in factories, you know, making textiles or, or different things like that, 12, 15 hours a day. My great great grandpa was actually a coal miner, so working in the coal mines. Those were really hard work environments. But when I think about some of the jobs today, it seems like it's not it's not equivalent to working in a factory or a coal mine. So I think if somebody wants to work more hours or, you know, maybe if they work fifty hours a week, it's you know, that's their choice and it's not like they're gonna die from it or anything. So I don't know how regulated it needs to be. I think it's important that employees have good work conditions and are, are not exploited but i do think that and maybe that's part of the gigacat maybe that's part of what's driving it is you know people are putting 30 hours here 30 hours there and 30 hours here because you know frankly corporations there are a lot of regulations about working your w2 employees too much yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think back uh, a few years ago when they came with the Affordable Care Act, right? And all of a sudden it required people that were worked more than 30 hours to get health insurance, or I can't remember what the exact hours were. But right. the idea is that all of a sudden, congratulations, you're now eligible to get health care. Bad news is your job's gone, right? Because <laughs> uh, we, can't, we can't give you that many hours. And right. you know, what people, all of a sudden now they had to go get two jobs to get the same amount of hours they had before just because they were getting, so it gets kind of touchy. You know, the thing I'm seeing as I work with the kind of the 55-year-old corporate executive, he or she, you know, they're coming to me and saying, you know, Pete, I just want to put myself in a position where, one, I'm in control. I'm in control of my destiny, right? I, I don't want anybody to walk in and say, hey, we're done with you. you we've out, you know, you've you outlived your your time here. We're mo- going in a different direction. So we're, I'm seeing that, and I'm also seeing they're saying, hey, listen, Pete, I want to create this idea of multiple income streams. And that's where I think franchising is a wonderful thing, the executive model, semi-absentee. I did it all wrong when I left the corporate world, right? I, I just gave up my job, my high-paying income, invested in a franchise. But the growing trend, as you and I are seeing today, is people keeping that six-figure income, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and starting the franchise on the side. Why? Because they one can diversify, but number two is they can kind of have a little better chance of kind of having some income to cover themselves as they're building the business. Yeah, there's always different trade-offs, right? So sometimes being a little bit more uh, semi-absentee manager run, you're going to have to deploy more capital to pay for managers and all that versus if you do it yourself, you know, you can start lower. So I think it's just important to, you know, I think it's great that we have so many options today. Yeah. And yeah. There, I think there's, I think the hardest thing people have is just kind of seeking direction and figuring out like what, what to do or how to how to do the research. And then also, you know, a lot of times, I think, ironically for me, even when I bought my senior care franchise, I actually bought the first one that I came across, which is not a very sophisticated way to approach it. (laughs) Like in hindsight, you know, all things being equal, you know, if you're going to make a 10 year commitment to something, it's probably be best to like, do a broad search and, you know, see, like, let's look at all the comparables and see what the options really are. Yeah, that's certainly what we do is to help people kind of navigate through that because there are things. I was uh, saying in my webinar, 
yesterday that not all executive model semi absentee or side gig businesses uh, are the same, meaning they may say that you can do this semi absentee and it may be really hard. So I said, when you do your due diligence, you know, make sure you're talking to those franchisees that they're actually doing it part time or have it on the side opposed to being it full time. So uh, it could be a wonderful thing, but you have to pick the right opportunity. And to your point, a good diligent research of a f- of franchise opportunities is is a good call. Yeah. And I really like, you know, when you think about the gig economy, it's, you know, kind of by definition, lots of flexibility and people doing projects essentially and getting paid, you know, by piecework. But, you know, with the franchise, you're able to, again, kind of going back to that, you know, renting versus owning, you're creating an asset. And sometimes I think you have to take one step backwards to take two steps forward. But I also really like that concept of, you know, two or three businesses ultimately to kind of complement each other and diversify you and just kind of keep it life interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's going to be fun to watch the the continuation of technology and how it allows more and more people to have gig uh, opportunities on the side. And and I think as as we've talked about before, it's going to grow to be a bigger part of our world. And it's so cool, right? Because people can do what they enjoy. It's on their terms. They have the flexibility, the control. And I think that's what life is all about, is having that ability to, to be in charge of, of where you're going. So a good conversation today. Uh, it's going to be really fun to watch how this all uh, continues to evolve. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Hire Yourself podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us a rating, and leave a comment on iTunes or wherever you're listening to our podcast. Hire Yourself offers some great resources on our website at hireyourself.com. And if you would like more content regularly, follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook. We look forward to you listening again to help you on your journey of living life on your own terms.